what's happening, brothers? Welcome to another episode of Nate's Shop at Convo. I'm Nate. This is the only podcast where building the man is the business. First and first, let's give God his prayer. Our Father, which I in heaven, once again we come to you boldly for repentance, heart, omission, commission, words and deeds and thoughts, unknown and known, past, present, and future. Thank you, Lord, for once again blessing us to be godly men that's on the move for you. Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Second thing, we want to order some candy from Angelic Seeds Candy Company, the Palm of Nathan 282 at gmail.com, or you can message me on Facebook at Nat Palm, N A T P A L M. A six piece is $6, a 12 piece is $12. I do milk chocolate, dark chocolate, and white chocolate. Whatever you want in it, I can put it in there for you. Anything considered a specialty will be extra, and me shipping it to you if need to be is also extra. Now, let's conversate. We have a special guest on Angelic Sweets. I'm sorry. We have, <laughs> we have a special guest here on Nate's Chocolate Combo, too. He goes by the name of Roger Tyler, actor extraordinaire. Coming real soon to a theater near you. There we go. How you doing, here? I'm great, man. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling blessed, highly favored. I'm good, boy. Um, tell me about a little bit about yourself and where you from and how you got started with acting. Well, I am from Richmond, Virginia. Uh, well, originally from Spotsylvania, Virginia. I moved here about 18 years ago. I'm now at the ripe age of 37. Uh, people call that old, but I'm just young, old. So <laughs> I live it like that. Um, but I started with acting as far as elementary school. I was doing plays and middle school plays and high school I started doing drama club. And about my 10th, 11th grade year, I decided to get into radio television broadcasting, which is kind of another route of acting and that stuff behind the camera. So I've always had the chops of acting, but I transitioned into that. And then from there I went to music, which is how I met you. Um, this man was actually my first manager when I was rapping. so. That's how I transitioned into music, and then went from music into acting because I just saw a, I saw more for me in in, in this entertainment. Okay. So I was like, you know what? I've always had the acting chops. I was starting to do a film in 2012 that I was gonna shoot myself, but I had no knowledge, none. Uh, 2013, I actually got into my first film, Born in the Fall of America 2, When Everything Fails. That's on Amazon Prime now. Um, and that's by Visions Filmworks, and they ended up uh, putting me in a role of a guy named Mike, which is kind of like a butthead lawyer. So I um, played that role, and ever since then, I'm like, I want to do this more. So a few years passed, I was still doing music, and um, I ended up uh, seeing some casting calls for commercials. And I was like, I did this a long time ago, let me try it. So I tried it and got into a few commercials, and the rest was history. Now, who or what inspired you to be Inspiration, um, black actors in general, because there's not a lot of, there wasn't a lot of us push for real, for, and, and, and for us in this field, it was always like white leads, or uh, the lead was always something that wasn't black, or some, we were always a side character. And then when Chadwick Boseman started with Black Panther, that was, when I heard he got casted for that role, that like sparked me to be like, Oh, they allow with black people in Hollywood now do bigger stuff. Oh, it's getting out there now that like we're like in that type of level because we've always had like the Will Smiths or the Denzels and stuff like that. But it almost felt like there was a shift in the field of acting when he became Black Panther for me at least. And I saw myself in him, so I started studying and doing everything I can. I actually my first since all audition was the Black Panther movie, but I had no knowledge. I was sending, I sent not one headshot. I sent nothing but action shots. So I'm looking like Spider-Man doing poses and stuff. And I know the casting directors were like, what is this? So they tossed me to the side probably, but that's mainly how I started, man, was just seeing Chadwick, his rise. That like really inspired me to really push. I've always been inspired, but that just, that was a punch in the gut to be like, oh, this is it. Now this is what we do right here on Nate's Chocolate Combo. We promote businesses, movies, music, clothing lines, 
everything right here on this podcast. So always stay tuned. Keep watching. You'll see more and more. Now, what's the latest movies you got coming out? Oh, man. We, uh, I got a couple movies. I'm actually in a film called Together. Um, you can watch that now at www.togetherthefilm.com. That's a film where I play a husband that is going through a rough marriage, and his wife is getting tired of me. So she finds her a little young thing at work, and they come up with a crazy plot to do something to me. Um, it's a short film out now that um, was just premiered at Riff, the Richmond International Film Festival, which is like the biggest festival in Richmond for film. Um, and I also have a film that I did myself, uh, that I produced, um, co-directed, wrote, uh, funded, all of that, and it's called Daughter. And that was like my most personal film because I dealt with so much in those nine months. Coincidentally, it was nine months that it was made, this main daughter. But uh, in those nine months, I went through so many life changes and transitional changes that it made me who I am right at this point. Um, that film is about a father who is dealing with the loss of his significant other, um, and she passed away at her at his daughter's birth. Uh, it was his girlfriend. I'm um, assuming it was fi fiance. He was going to propose to her, but she passed away at, at a young age, um, having the baby. And it shows the transition of a black male dealing with that loss, and him kind of violent in because us as black men, we don't like to talk. We like to keep stuff in because we're always told in the world that we can't cry, we gotta be tough, we gotta be strong, we gotta do all these things. So this film really made me highlight myself in that to be more emotional and more, more into that field. So playing a father that is dealing with something like that, also dealing with mental health issues, from him talking to a counselor, going to counseling for this, and finally revealing to his daughter how he loved, how much he loved his, her, her mother. Uh, it was a challenge. And just because of things going on outside of my life and inside of my life and just being connected to to this character, Michael, through all that pain was just, it was a lot, man. You can watch that film now at www.daughtertheshortfilm.com. Again, that's www.daughtertheshortfilm.com. Thank you. Note to you ladies, stop telling your man, stop crying. He's being vulnerable and he's being open to you about his feelings. Yes. So you stop telling him that. Yes. Or he flip out and kill you. I'm just joking. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Please, yeah. Men have feelings too, so that's a good one. Now what about the other movie you were talking about, The Hybrid? That's Hybrid? Oh yeah, that is a actual really a series. Um, it's by a guy named Ron Cromartie. He is, uh, this film is about a, a man who is trying to find himself again. That's kind of the best way I can describe that is he's dealing with a lot of memory loss and it has to do with a lot of time traveling and it has to do with a lot of, uh, I guess people are calling them variants now or different characters that are in different worlds but are the same person at the same time. Um, it's a lot of that in the series. So that's more of an action driven thing. It's more of a um, culturally driven as far as like having black weed, like are we talking black weeds in this? And it's, it's great, man. We are it's we just got finished with episode one. They're starting episode two, and it's gonna be six episodes. So, yeah. shout out to Ron for Marty too, man. Check him out. That's dope, that's dope. So, where, where do you see yourself at, I said five years from now, in the acting scene? Well, dealing with what I'm dealing with now, I'm with the management team, the main out group. Um, that's my, my management company uh, that, I, that I work with, uh, Patrick Maymel, that is my manager, and he has been pushing my career in this, this past year um, that we've been working with, got, with, with each other. He's the one that executive produced together, and he also helped me executive produce daughter. He did a lot of background work, he did a lot of editing, him and his wife, uh, and they've been helping me instrumentally a lot. So if I keep being around people with those type of connections and those type of of ways and that are actually pushing themselves. I see myself in the clouds. I see myself at the Oscars, at, at, at the Tony Awards, at the NAACP, the Image Awards. I see myself in places like that just from having a good solid team. And that's something I haven't really had for me ever, is having a team for me, somebody that can be there on my end and help like that. And, and 
it's it's different when you have the knowledge. Mm-hmm. I know with us back then, we had knowledge, but we didn't have the knowledge. We were just winging it. We started just, hey, let's do it. But if we had the knowledge that we had now, I'm guaranteeing we wouldn't be here. Um, so having what I have now, it's almost like I wish I had it, like that knowledge back then. But now that I have it, I see myself in five years, which I'll be in my 40s. Yeah, I see myself out of here, man. I don't see myself in Richmond too much longer. That's a good thing, because I actually always moved to Atlanta because they're entertaining. So there's plenty of opportunity in Atlanta, so I was telling him about that. He moved to Atlanta. LA is kind of oversaturated, but Atlanta is the new Hollywood, black Hollywood. So the, the, the moral of the story is we came a long way since 2002. Maybe two or three, two, three, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we started with doing rap music. I was his uh, manager. He was the artist. We, we didn't even think about acting to some, some time later on. But then you know, everybody kind of split ways. I moved, but we back together now. So we, we doing big things now. Now I was talking to you about that movie. I always say I want to do a horror movie. Mm-hmm. So. How will, will we be able to work that out and show them inspiring actors and directors on how to start their movies? The simplest form and build from there. Well, the best way to start with anything is doing research. I tell everybody that YouTube University is the best place for anything. YouTube, you can find literally how to how to make firecrackers. Like it's just, it's everything is on that platform. So anybody asking a question, always do your YouTube's. Look up and see what this is and what this consists of. I know when I was starting with acting. I really did a lot of research. I looked at work, what's this, what's this? How do I get to this? And it took a while, it took trial and error, man. There were some sets I went on where I got paid pennies and I did a lot that whole day. And then there were some sets that I went on where I literally did one thing or said one line and got paid $500. Or I did one thing where I was, I did voice acting too. Um, I did a voice acting spot for BMW and they paid me, it was, five dollars a minute and I was there for 40 minutes so there's stuff like that in this field that I like to do but to get started I had to search and do research and, and to do all of that so the best way to start with is to do your research if you want to do a horror film it's a lot it's a whole lot shooting daughter was over five thousand dollars a lot of money um, so it takes money, it takes patience, time. I know the first day we shot Daughter, I had somebody back out and that was a good easy, five, it was a $500 loss that day. And so I literally could have taken $500, got one, put it in the toilet and flushed it. And it would have been the same result as that one day because we did nothing with that footage and everybody wasted their